The Resilience of Faith Amidst the Grand Mosque Seizure The stillness of dawn in Mecca was shattered on November 20, 1979, as a group of heavily armed militants stormed the sacred grounds of the Grand Mosque. Devotees who had gathered for the early morning prayer were caught in a web of fear and confusion, their prayers turning into silent cries for help. The sanctity of the holiest site in Islam was violated, and the reverberations of this act of violence would be felt far beyond the sacred precincts. Families, hearts filled with dread, awaited news of their loved ones. The world watched, stunned, and horrified, as the place meant for peace and devotion became a battleground. Led by Juhayman al-Otaibi and Muhammad Abdullah al-Qahtani, the militants proclaimed that they were liberating Islam from the grip of a corrupt and un-Islamic Saudi regime. Al-Qahtani declared himself the Mahdi, the prophesied redeemer of Islam, a claim that fueled the audacity of the siege. The insurgents, numbering several hundred, fortified their positions within the mosque, transforming the sacred space into a fortress of rebellion. The Saudi authorities were caught off guard by the sudden and audacious takeover. The initial response was one of caution. The sacred nature of the site demanded a delicate approach. The king of Saudi Arabia, Khalid bin Abdulaziz, faced a profound crisis. His decisions in the coming days would not only impact his reign, but would shape the future of the kingdom. The responsibility of resolving this crisis fell heavily on the shoulders of the security forces, who had to balance the urgent need to reclaim the mosque with the imperative to preserve its sanctity and minimize casualties. The first attempts to dislodge the militants met with fierce resistance. The insurgents, well-armed and well-prepared, repelled the initial assaults with a deadly barrage of gunfire. The narrow corridors and numerous minarets of the mosque complex provided ample cover and strategic advantage to the defenders. The Saudi forces, though equipped with modern weaponry, were hampered by the constraints of fighting in such a revered location. As the siege dragged on, it became apparent that a resolution would require external expertise. The Saudi government discreetly reached out to international allies. Among those who responded were Pakistani military advisors and a team of French commandos from the Groupe d'Intervention de la Gendarmerie Nationale, GIGN. The collaboration with non-Muslim forces was kept secret to avoid further inflaming religious sentiments. On December 4th, after two weeks of intense standoff and bloodshed, a decisive assault was launched. The combined efforts of Saudi and French commandos employing tear gas and other tactics, managed to breach the militants' defenses. In a grueling battle, the insurgents were gradually overpowered. The aftermath of the siege was harrowing. The mosque's floors, once the site of peaceful worship, were now marked with the scars of conflict. Bodies of militants, hostages, and security forces lay amidst the rubble. The official death toll remained undisclosed, but estimates suggested that hundreds lost their lives. The leaders of the uprising, including Juhayman al Otebi, were captured. In swift and secret trials, justice was meted out. The public executions of the surviving insurgents served as a stark warning to potential dissidents. The Grand Mosque seizure was not merely an isolated act of terror. It was a reflection of deeper undercurrents within Saudi society. The insurgents' grievances were rooted in a perceived moral decay— and the kingdom's increasing alignment with Western ideals. They accused the Saudi monarchy of betraying the true principles of Islam in pursuit of modernization and wealth. In response to the crisis, the Saudi government took drastic measures. To placate the conservative factions, they implemented stricter Islamic policies. The religious police, or mutawa, were given greater authority to enforce Islamic codes of conduct. The curriculum in schools was revised to emphasize religious studies. The leadership sought to reaffirm their commitment to Islamic principles to restore public confidence and prevent future insurrections. The incident also had a profound impact on global perceptions of Islam and the Middle East. It occurred at a time when the Iranian Revolution and the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan 
were already reshaping the geopolitical landscape. The Grand Mosque seizure added to the narrative of a region in turmoil, grappling with religious extremism and political instability. However, amidst the tragedy and turmoil, there were lessons of resilience and hope. The Saudi state's ability to ultimately reclaim the Grand Mosque demonstrated the resolve to maintain order and protect the sanctity of their most sacred site. The collaboration with international forces, though controversial, highlighted the potential for global cooperation in addressing crises. In the years following the siege, Saudi Arabia embarked on a path of introspection and reform. The realization that radical ideologies could arise from within spurred efforts to address the root causes of extremism. Investments in education, economic diversification, and social development became cornerstones of the kingdom's strategy to build a more resilient and cohesive society. The memory of the Grand Mosque seizure remains etched in the collective consciousness of the Muslim world. It serves as a reminder of the delicate balance between faith and governance, tradition and modernization. The tragedy of 1979 underscored the importance of vigilance against extremism and the need for dialogue and understanding in resolving conflicts. Today, as millions of pilgrims from around the world continue to flock to Mecca for the Hajj, the sanctity of the Grand Mosque stands restored. The lessons learned from the dark days of 1979 have contributed to a more secure and resilient pilgrimage experience. The sight that once echoed with the sounds of gunfire now resonates with prayers and chants of devotion, a testament to the enduring spirit of faith. The Grand Mosque seizure, though a chapter of pain and loss, also ignited a journey of reflection and reform. It inspired a nation to confront its challenges with renewed determination. The courage of those who endured the siege, the sacrifices of those who reclaimed the sacred ground, and the wisdom of those who guided the subsequent reforms have left an indelible mark on Saudi Arabia's history. In remembering the Grand Mosque seizure, we honor not only the victims, but also the resilience and hope that emerged from the ashes of conflict. It is a story of a nation's struggle and triumph, a testament to the enduring power of faith and the human spirit's capacity to overcome even the darkest of times. As we look to the future, let the lessons of 1979 inspire us to build a world where peace and understanding prevail over division and extremism.